A few days ago, I posted up on the WP Touch Facebook group, link in the description, to give me amazing little plugins that you've come across in your time working with WordPress that you think more people should know about. Thankfully, tons of you wonderful people gave me some great links. And I've also included some of my own links inside you. And I want to just create a video that just gives you the heads up on some of these wicked little plugins you may want to check out for yourself. So let's start off by taking a look at temporary login plugins without password. This is a nifty little plugin that does one simple thing, create temporary credentials to allow users to log into a website without the need to set up user accounts, usernames, passwords, and so on. You can do things like set the access levels and so much more. Let's take a quick look at it right now. So once you've gone ahead, downloaded and installed the plugin, come into your dashboard, and inside your dashboard, go into the users section and there's a new entry inside there called temporary logins. Open that up and this will then show any of the logins you have created, how long they last and so on. But before we take a look at that, let's just jump into the settings because there's a few things inside here you can configure from the onset. So first of all, you've got your visible roles. What roles do you want to allow people to be able to have access to when you create those links? By default, you see, I've just got editor selected, but if I hold the shift key down, I can select more than that. So we leave administrator out because we're gonna keep that out of the list. Default role is gonna be set to editor, the default redirect after someone logs in using our link is dashboard. We can set other ones up inside here if we want specific pages and so on. You can set your expiry time as a default. So you can see we can go from hours to months. So that's pretty cool. And the one thing I always love to see in plugins is the ability that when you delete the plugin, all the data and all the files and everything is stripped out of the database and also the installation inside WordPress itself. So make sure that's checked. We'll hit submit. And now let's go to our temporary logins. Let's go ahead and create one. We can give the email address you want to send this to if you want to send it. We have to put an email address in, so we'll just put in billy at email.com and we'll pop a first name in, which isn't required, but it can be useful if you're sort of setting this up for different kinds of clients. Then you can see we've got the role, so you can see all the options are available. Editor being the default that we set is set in Sideshow, but you can change it to any of the four we have enabled. We can override the redirect after login, but we'll leave that to dashboard. We can set our expiry, one week is perfectly fine, and we can also set the language the dashboard is gonna be set up in, so you can see there's all the languages that WordPress has available. We leave all those values as they are and hit submit, and that will then create that link for us. So now we've got this temporary link that's gonna last us an X number of days. We can copy this and we can send this directly over to whoever we want to give access to it. If you take a look underneath, you can see this will give us an overview of all the different links we have, their status, who they're sent to, if they've been logged into, those kinds of things. And then we have some actions. We can go ahead, we can lock this, we can disable the link basically. So we can delete it, we can edit it, we can email it, and if we want to, we can copy the login link one more time. So let's copy that link. Let's open up an incognito window, and let's pop that link in and hit enter or return. And you'll see I'm immediately logged into that website as an editor, so I've got only editor's options down the left-hand side. If I try to access things like profile where I don't have access to it, I don't have permission for that. However, I can come into things like posts, and I can go ahead and edit posts and do all those kinds of things. So we take a look at the top right-hand side. It tells us this is temporary access, and you can see I'm logged in as Billy. So really, really simple little plugin that does one simple job, but then when you finish with that, you can go ahead and you can lock that, or you can delete it. We'll say OK, and that link has now been removed. Simple as that. Really cool little plugin. <music> Now, if you're a WooCommerce user, you'll know that managing a store, especially when you've got a lot of products, can be a little bit time consuming and it's not the quickest interface. And we'll take a look at another method of speeding this up a little later. But one of the tools you may want to take a look at is Bay, which is a bulk editor and product manager for WooCommerce. Again, go ahead, download and install this. And once you've done that, inside your dashboard where you've got WooCommerce installed, you're going to have a new section underneath the option for products, which is Bay Bulk Editor. Let's open that up. And this now loads in a new setting. You can see this looks familiar to what you're used to seeing as part of WooCommerce, but it also has a lot of extra features. Now, if you've ever used a plugin called Admin Columns Pro, this is gonna be somewhat familiar. You can see, we can see any of the products we've got on our store, but we also have the ability to 
go ahead and inline edit things like the content for the description, the short description and so on. So we click that, that will open up a new window and allow us to edit that content. We can also go ahead and we can set this and change the type from simple to group to external affiliate and so on. We can change the status inside here. We can adjust the pricing and you can see we can click to edit this or we can go ahead and we can use a calculator to actually calculate various different parameters to control this, including how we want to handle the rounding of any figures. We can set the sale price if we want to. We can add in a SKU code, manage stock options, and you can see we can add a stock quantity, stock status, and so on. We can also go ahead and we can click to preview the product itself and you can see that'll take us over. Now, don't worry about the reason this is blurred. I'll explain that in a moment. But you can see we've got a lot of different options inside you. At the top, we've also got things for creating advanced filters. So you can see we can click, we can add in variable different products things. So we can say we want a variable product as part of our filter options. We'll say load this. And now that's going to go ahead and it'll search for any of the variable products we have as part of our product database. Now, the cool thing about this is you can see this is a variable product. Now, if we click the option for variations at the top, what this will do is this will load in now and show us the variations for any of our variable products. And then we can make changes to the variation without having to open up the actual product itself. So a ball cactus, for example, has three different variations, the small, medium and large. And then we can go ahead and we can adjust pricing. We can adjust the description and so on for those individual different variations. And this just scratches the surface of what you can do with this plugin. Yes, there are some pro features you may have to pay for, but there are so many options inside you in the free version. And as long as you can kind of ignore the advertising and so on, I think this is one that you want to check out if you work with WooCommerce. And like I say, there's still plenty more options available that I can't cover in this quick overview. Now, when you've got a website online, especially if it's a business website, you need to make sure you know if anything goes wrong. If your site goes offline, the hosting goes offline, all manner of different things that could cause your site to be unavailable. Well, I tend to use a tool called Better Uptime, and that'll monitor lots of different things, but it doesn't necessarily monitor everything. And this is where our next little plugin will actually give you some extra peace of mind should anything happen to your website. This little plugin is called Fatal Error Notify. Once you've installed and activated it inside the settings in WordPress, you have a new entry called Fatal Error Notify. And it's incredibly simple to set up. You drop in your notification email to be notified when something goes wrong. You then you can send a test if you want to, but then you can go ahead and choose what kind of errors will be logged and reported. And like I say, these are sometimes things that don't get picked up by tools like Better Uptime. So you can enable any or all of these options. And if any of these errors occur as part of WordPress, you'll be notified via email. It is basically as simple as that. You just have this set up and you have a little bit more peace of mind. And if anything goes wrong, you'll be notified and then you can go ahead, check out and reinstall from a backup, whatever kind of option you want. So check out Fatal Error Notify. Totally free and pretty useful. Next on our list is Advanced Access Manager. Again, not a particularly sexy sounding plugin, but it is one that's incredibly useful, especially if you have a website where you want to have a really finite level of control of what each user or user group or user role actually has access to. So let's go ahead and take a little look at what this brings to the table. So once you've installed and activated it, you'll have a new entry in your dashboard called AAM. Let's open that up. And inside here, you now have tons of control. Now, some of this is still locked behind a pro paywall, but there's still more than enough inside you to be able to do most things that most users will actually need in the free version. So once you've gone into the AAM section, you'll see inside there you have all the options on the left hand side of the different parts of the site itself. We've got information and settings that will appear in the middle. And also then on the right hand side, we can go ahead and choose any of the current existing standard WordPress user roles, or we can go ahead and add our own in. So for example, you can see inside the author, you can choose the options inside there, or you can come into contributor, for example, click the little cog icon, and then you can go and change various different parameters inside you. For example, things like the toolbar, you can choose what they do and don't have access to things like posts and terms. Again, you have all the different sections inside you. 
You've got your different capabilities and so on, so you can see you can set up what they can and can't do. It's a very comprehensive tool. Now, like I say, some of it is still locked behind a paywall, but you should have enough options inside you to make it worthwhile testing out to see if it actually meets your needs. So that's the Advanced Access Manager. Tons of options, check it out. Now, if you have a larger website where you've got lots of organization using tags, taxonomies, and so on, you may want to check out TaxoPress. This gives you the ability to manage and organize your tags, your categories, those kinds of things. It's a very comprehensive plugin that probably would take a little bit of time to sit down and work your way through, but you can use this from as complex to as simple as you want to. Let me show you some of the simple examples. So once you go into your dashboard, you're gonna have a new entry called Taxopress. Inside there, there are a lot of options. You can see, you can go ahead and open up and take a look at your taxonomies, for example. And this will list the taxonomy location. So for example, your categories, if we click to open that up, inside there, you now see we have a ton of options associated with it. So post types, permalinks, admin area, other labels and so on. You really can get in and customize this to the nth degree. If you go into terms, this will show us all of the different terms, and you can see this shows us we've got a title, the slug for this, the taxonomy, whether it's a category or a tag, the posts, what is it kind of associated with, and any posts that are inside there. So for example, uncategorized, we've got one inside there. So again, you can see everything. If we come into terms display and open that up, again, you can see we've got a lot of different options inside here for customizing the look and feel of this. If you want to, you can go ahead and you can manage your terms. So if we go and change this to categories and change our selection, you can see this shows us all of the categories that we have. And then we can do things like we can add terms if we want to. We can rename, merge terms, remove terms and so on. You can see you can add terms only to post with specific terms attached. So you can really get in and start to customize this. And if you have a site you retrospectively want to customize the terms, you may want to add new tags, new terms to it, and things like that. This is going to be something that's going to make that whole process considerably easier. So I would recommend checking out Taxopress. This is just scratching the surface of how powerful this can be. Great for larger sites, or if you've got a very, very quick way of organizing everything, and you don't want to have to do it in a manual way, this is going to allow you to do things in bulk. Now, we all know that WordPress can be a little bit slow at times, especially when you start to add more images, more content, more database calls, and so on. Well, this is where FastPress may be something you want to check out. If you like the options of basically installing it, forgetting it, and not having to get stuck into pages and pages and pages of settings, then FastPress may be worth checking out. Again, once you've gone ahead, downloaded it, installed it, you're going to come over into your dashboard, into the option for settings, and inside there is FastPress. Open that up. And this will show you all of the settings you have, of which you can see there aren't many. And you can see a lot of this is basically switched on by standard. So you could just literally go with this as it is without needing to change anything yourself. But if you wanted to tweak something or you found something wasn't working the way you expected, for example, with the optimizing CSS or JavaScript and so on, you could go ahead, disable that, refresh, try out your page, try out your site, make sure everything is working. But literally, it's a one-click install, and you can probably go with the basic settings on pretty much every site. And that's FastPress. Simple as that. Check it out. See what kind of speed improvements you get on your site without having to get stuck into pages of settings. Now, if you're using WordPress, you'll know that there's a lot of bloat, especially if you're using WooCommerce. This is where disabled bloat for WordPress and WooCommerce could save you a lot of hassle, both from the front end and the back end and speed things up considerably. Let's take a quick look at how you use it and what's included. So once you've installed it, you're gonna come over into the WooCommerce and into settings section. Inside there, you've got a new tab at the end called disabled bloat. Now there's some of this lock behind the pro paywall, but again, there should be more than enough inside you to streamline the whole setup, front end and back end. So you can see, if we take a look at the top, we've got main settings, admin panel optimization, and so on. So various different sections of your dashboard, of your front end and so on, can be optimized. So if you take a look, you can see we've got things like WooCommerce admin to disable the WooCommerce admin, disable the marketing hub, disable the WooCommerce.com store notices. So you can take your time and have a look through here and see the things that you do and don't want to be enabled as part of your copy of WooCommerce and WordPress. 
Now be careful because if you're using some other tools, you may find there's an overlap, especially with the WordPress side of things, where you can disable front end and sort of back end various different features. So be careful if you're using something like iTheme Security or something like that, where you can disable various different features. So check that out, be careful. But as you can see, there's an awful lot of options inside you. If we come over to things like the admin panel optimization, you can see again, we've got options inside here for the free version and for the pro version. So for example, hide update notice for non-admin users. So if you've got things like shop users and things like that, you may want to disable any update notifications that they may see simply by checking this and then only admin users will actually see those update notifications. Pretty much everything else inside there is a pro only feature, but then you've got things like site performance, Again, you can see we've got things like disable the password strength meter, load comment scripts only when needed. So there's various different features in here that you may want to check out. And it goes right the way down to your WordPress core. So these are non WooCommerce options. And then right the way down to your block editor where you can enable and disable Gutenberg and you disable various different other features. So again, take your time, have a look through here because there's a lot of things inside here, even in the free version that should be able to optimize your experience and also the experience of anybody that may be managing content content, products, and so on. Pair that up with something like the Bear Bulk Editor, and you are starting to streamline the whole process of working with WooCommerce, especially on much bigger sites. Next on our list is a plugin called Shortcoder. Now this allows you to create shortcodes for pretty much anything on your entire site and then use them anywhere on your entire site. Now it's way beyond the scope of what I can kind of cover in a very quick video like this, but I would recommend checking this out because there's a lot of power underneath the hood here. So let's go ahead and see a really simple example of how you could use this. Let's come into our dashboard. Once you've got it installed, you'll see there's a new entry called shortcoder. We're gonna come in and we're gonna say all shortcodes. Imagine this like a kind of typical code snippets plugin where you can create code snippets, but imagine these more as short codes as opposed to snippets that get injected into various different parts of your site. So I've created two really simple code snippets. One is the day, one is the post modification date. And let's take a, take a look at what's going on inside here. Let's edit one of these and you can see we have what looks like a normal kind of layer in WordPress. We can give this a name. We've got a sort of editor underneath and we've got some short code settings where we can put the display name, a description and so on and so forth. You can tag these if you wanted to organize and group things together, which would make sense as this kind of grows. And then you'll see we've got the option to create our short codes. So we can switch between a text editor, a visual editor and a code editor. So depending upon what you want to do, you can use this inside here and you can use various built in short code parameters, but you can use HTML, CSS, so you could design whatever you wanted inside here and then inject that into any part of your site using that short code. Let's keep this really, really simple. Let's delete what we've got here. And we click on the option for insert short code parameters. This is one of the built in features. This allows us then to go and grab information from WordPress, from date parameters, short code, enclosed content, custom parameters, even custom fields if you're using something like advanced custom fields or so on. Let's do something really simple though. Let's say we've got the date parameter. You can see we can choose things like day, day leading zeros, the month, the year, and so on. So we can choose whatever we want from there. Go to WordPress information, you can see we've got the URL of the postal location, the post ID, post author, and so on. Even things like the post modification date. So let's choose that as this option. So we'll choose post modification date, and you see this now puts in its own little unique short code for that specific feature. Like I said, you can mix and match this then with HTML if you wanted to. So you could just as easily put in today is and then you could leave that short code and then that will generate that, including the text we put before. If you want to make this bold, you can just select it and click on the bold and you see that it'll put the strong tags around it. And you can use any kind of CSS targeting, you know, inline CSS, anything like that whatsoever. Let's go ahead and remove this and just leave this little bit of code here. We'll update this. And once you've done that, now let's go back to all our short codes and you see there are the short codes for each one of the short coder the codes that we've created, lots of codes there. So you can copy this from here or you can just use this inside the Gutenberg editor. But let's go ahead and just open up a page. Let's open up this privacy policy. 
And I've basically inserted a placeholder now that says today is, and we want to use the short code. Now you could, if you wanted to, come up to the plus and we can do a search for short code and you'll see there's our short coder short code. So we could use that if we wanted to, we could click, but that inserts its own dedicated uh, block element in, which isn't necessarily what you want. So what we can also do is we can remove that from there and we can just use the shortcode inside our standard content. So again, whether this is HTML or CSS or using one of those shortcodes that we've got as part of shortcoder itself, we can use that inside here. So we drop that in, there's the shortcode for it. You can see using the syntax that the shortcoder creates when we create a shortcode. We'll click update on there and we'll preview this. And you see today is November 7th, 2022. Simple as that, we've just used that short code. And if we change that short code, anywhere that references it, will update on the page itself. So you can use this in so many different ways to do way more exciting things than I just shown you here. Using CSS, HTML, JavaScript, anything you kind of want, and then just output it as a short code. Pretty nifty. <music> Now sticking with Gutenberg, if you have Gutenberg installed and you want to offload this to a client, or you just want to get rid of the clutter of the things that you don't use at all, then maybe you want to take a look at remove unwanted Gutenberg blocks. Now I know you can manually remove things inside Gutenberg itself, but it's a little bit slow and it's a little bit clunky. It's not the best way of working. This is something that could be a lot more useful. So once we've installed it, come over into the dashboard, we've got the blocks manager, which I can go ahead and manage my blocks, or I can come over into the settings section into block manager from there. And this now shows us all the different blocks and the categories. And we can switch between list view and grid view. And you can see we can go ahead and we can just say, we don't want any of the design ones. Click all disabled. And then we can say, well, we want custom links. So that'll put that one back on. So it's already quicker than using the built-in Gutenberg option. And you can see all the different options inside you, the media, your text, any sort of Gutenberg third-party options you have in store will also be listed inside you. And you can see with the amount of options we've got inside you right now, to be doing this manually would be really time consuming and boring. In the category section, this is where you can reorganize the actual content of the categories. So for example, you can see archives is in widgets, but we may want to put that inside media, for example. Well, you can update it and it'll be put into that subsection. Let's put that back, otherwise it makes no sense whatsoever. But you can see by using the blocks to enable and disable any of the block elements you do or don't want, and then using the categories to organize where the ones you actually want to use are going to be located inside the Gutenberg editor itself, you can customize this to a very nice degree. Great if you were offloaded to a client and you want to strip out everything other than what you want to give them access to. You might want to check out this option. Now this is probably a more technical, techy kind of plugin. This is SQL Buddy or SQL Buddy. This allows you to see the database and make changes to it for the site that you currently have active. Now obviously you wanna be very, very careful with this that you don't accidentally delete something or change something that kills your site. So be careful, make a backup first. So coming into the dashboard of WordPress, underneath the tools options you'll have SQL Buddy or SQL Buddy. Open that up and that will now show you the dashboard and all the database tables that you have as part of your copy of WordPress. Like I said, can't reiterate this strongly enough. Don't make changes if you don't know what you're doing and always make a backup beforehand. So you can see if we come in, for example, like the post meta, we can open that up and there's all the post meta information for this particular copy of WordPress. Come into posts, and you see there's all the post information, which we can scroll sideways and we can scroll up and down. And if you want to make changes to this, you can, you can come in, you can click inside there and then all the options for each one of the columns, each one of the fields is now listed on the right hand side, at which point you can make changes inside you. And the same thing goes for things like users and the passwords to go with it and things like that. But for example, if we come into the posts, you can, if you want to, also go ahead and filter this. It's very similar to what you'd have with something like a really simple version of PHP MyAdmin. You can also then go ahead and you can preview any of the options for the different columns you do or don't want to enable and disable. So this allows you to kind of streamline the things that are not particularly important to what you're looking for and searching for. But if you want to search for a table, you can search inside you and then you can make changes, updates and so on, all inside you. 
Again, I would recommend that if you use something like this, use it when you're in development or when you need it and then disable it and delete it when you've actually finished with it. So no one that potentially got access to the site could access your database and make changes that could break everything. But that's the options for SQL or SQL, buddy. Check it out if you have a need for editing your database inside WordPress itself. Now, no matter where you are in the world, you can't help but notice that GDPR and cookie consent and all those kinds of things are, well, something you have to have and something you have to make sure that you comply with. This isn't always the easiest thing in the world to do because it can be a bit of a minefield finding the tools that do the job. This is where you may want to check out Full Picture. Now, Full Picture has a free and a pro version. I'm only going to take a look at the free version because for a lot of users, this is going to be more than enough for things like your cookie and so on. Once you've installed it, you're going to have a new entry called Full Picture Inside your Dashboard. You're going to have a very simple three-step wizard that you follow through the first time you install it. Once you've gone ahead and followed that wizard, you're basically gonna have some simple options. You're gonna have what script or scripts or services, things like Google Analytics or the sort of Facebook Pixel, Twitter advertising, those kinds of things. You can enable any of those or all of those, and there's a lot inside you for free as well. You can then choose to have things like your cookie notification. You can set up geolocation modules and things like that. All of these are totally free. And then once you've done that, you can come in, you can customize any single aspect. So for example, custom scripts, if I open that up, you can see I can set up the script that I want to use, whether it's a header or a footer script. But once you drop that inside there in the header or footer, you'll have access to be able to set the cookie notifications. Then you can go ahead and you can set up your cookie notice. This is where you can customize the look and feel of your cookie and how you want things to work. So if we go ahead and customize this, we've got a couple of really simple options for the position of it, the styling and so on. But there's some nice little features inside you. You can see there's my pop up at the bottom. Please bear in mind, I haven't styled this. This looks particularly ugly. But you can see if we come into the layout and behavior, we can choose where we want this to appear. We can choose how we want it to appear. But we can also do things like if you don't want people to see the content or be able to scroll while this is sort of active before they've either confirmed or rejected, you can do things like you can lock the page scroll. So you can see I can't scroll up or down on this page. You can also specify the blur option, so this will blur the content out. So you're kind of forcing focus onto the option to agree to this, and once they agree to it, then they can actually get access to it. And if you come out of here, you go back into things like your styling. You can customize the styling, the look and feel, the colors, all those kinds of things. Pretty basic and minimalist, but it's there. And you can add classes if you want to target things by CSS to be a little bit more specific. And finally, you've got your text where you can then put in the text, a link to your privacy policy, those kinds of things. It's a very simple, clean, elegant way of working. And once you've got it set up, you can basically set it and forget it for the most use cases. And this is one of those tools that you can't actually use any of the code or any of those sort of features behind the scenes until that cookie setting has been agreed to. If they decline, those features won't work. So if you want to make sure you don't have Google Analytics targeting anybody until they agree, you can use this to do it. So bear that in mind. It is very useful. It's very strict on how it's set up and work. So check it out if you want to take a look. And that's full picture, the free version. Have a look. Now, one of my favorite plugins, especially when I'm setting up a site and I need some filler content, some filler posts and pages and things like that, is FakerPress. This is something I've been using for a long time. And if you've noticed any of my tutorials where there's lots of lorem ipsum text and things like that, it's pretty much been done with FakerPress. And all it does is it allows you to choose some basic parameters and it'll create some basic posts and tags and categories and whatever you kind of want. So let me show you how this works. Again, go ahead, download, install it, and you'll have FakerPress as a new entry. What we're going to do is we're going to come into, in this example, posts, but you can use this for comments, terms, and users. We're going to come into posts, and you can see we can choose the quantity of posts we want. So we'll say 12 to 15. Choose when you want this to be kind of dated. You can see we can set this to be posts and or pages. If you want to set up parent posts, you can do that inside here, whether you want to allow comments or not. If you want to set a specific author, you can do that. And then you can also do things like use HTML in the code, in the page, I should say. You can set the content size, the any HTML tags you want to use, the image providers for the thumbnail and any images you may have as part of the content. And also things like setting up taxonomy rules. 
any meta field rules and so on and then you just simply hit generate and that will then go ahead and generate download and put any images that you specified so you can see this has created a few more pages for me or a few more posts if you go to posts you can see there's a bunch of posts inside there or with lorem ipsum text if you open them up you can see inside here we've got varying amounts of content various different styles of content and so on come back out of here go to a different one Again, you can see we've got different kind of content inside there. So it's a very quick and easy way of being able to just sort of fill out and populate posts, pages, tags, categories, users, whatever you kind of want. So you can then style and edit that so you have some content on a site. And then you can delete it afterwards once you've finished with it. Pretty cool. That's Faker Press. Now, whether you love them or hate them, sliders are still something that are used on websites. And recently I released a video on Depictor. This is a totally free plugin. And I would recommend if you're looking for this kind of thing to have a little look at it. I will link to that video in the description so you can check it out. But basically this has a ton of options. So I've already gone ahead and installed it. Let's come into the dashboard. So for the dashboard, we can now go ahead and create or import a slider we may have created previously. We'll say create a slider. And you can see we've got a bunch of starters that we can use if we want to, or we can go ahead and start completely blank. Let's say we like the look of this one. We can preview it. That'll show us what this looks like and all the animation effects and everything else. And if we want to see it on tablets and we want to see it on a mobile, see what it looks like on those different devices, we can do that. If we like the look of that, then we can simply say, that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and import it. That will now download all the assets, create the kind of files for us, set everything up. We'll get rid of this and you see there is our starting point. And as you can see, we can go ahead and change the images inside here. We can play the animations to see what they look like as we go through and make sure that everything works the way that we want. You can see we can add more slides in if we want to. We can check it on mobile responsive devices. We can go ahead and customize pretty much every single aspect of this overall slide. And you can see there's a lot of options inside here. You can set up custom styles if you want to you can do custom css you can set hover animations animation effects and once you've kind of gone through that you go through your options then for your general your navigation loading options advanced core there's an abundance you can see i would recommend if you want to see how this works a little bit better check out my video but if you are looking for a tool like this and you want to use a slider on your site and you don't necessarily want to pay anything really do check out depictor it is an awesome little plugin and absolutely free and there we go. There are 13 amazing little plugins you may want to check out for WordPress, some of which you may know, many of which you may not. But as always, let me know any kind of plugins that you think I should check out, little obscure ones, things to do with just one little job. Let me know in the comment section with a link to it so I can take a look and maybe feature that in a future video. As always, all the applicable links for everything I've covered will be in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care. Thank you.